Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to go over um, the ionic bonds and a recap on the uh, previous tutorial which was uh, just looked at sodium chloride to make a uh, common table salt which is a, a large uh, crystalline lattice I'll just drag, drag these up if you remember so we, we looked at things like this where we have a a large crystalline lattice of sodium and chlorine, sodium and chlorine and this was because sodium had donated an electron from its outer shell to chlorine which I accepted it here I, I drew the electron a little bit bigger just to show where it was and that gave rise to a charged species called ions and these is called ions And um, they can be positive or negatively charged. They can have a positive or negative charge, and that's dependent really on whether they lose electron or gain electron. Remember, the the elements themselves are quite neutral. So sodium as a metal is a neutral species because it's got a complementary set of protons and electrons. But sometimes when they react together, they can form ionic species and ionic just means they've lost electron or gained electron now you can have cations or anions I won't go into that here but positive charges are cations and cat as in cat and negative ones are called anions okay that's just the names that's a T I'll, I'll put these words up on the website so you can read them a bit better. So these these are called ionic species, and these form ionic bonds. And ionic bonds generally uh, result in a large lattice. If you remember from the last tutorial, we get alternating positive and negative, positive and negative, positive and negative, and each positive and negative was uh, positive for sodium, negative for chlorine. And if you look at the electronic configuration here, I'll just choose a different colour. If we draw sodium electronic configuration for sodium chloride, then we have two, eight, and then we've lost an electron, so that gives it a positive charge. And if we look at chlorine, we've got Cl, that's actually gained an electron, so that gives one there for the first shell, second shell's full, and now the final shell's full as well because it's gained an electron and that becomes negatively charged and this is kind of the terminology that people use as well so you've got these square brackets and the electronic configuration there to explain uh, where all the electrons are in the shells and if you remember um, elements like to have closed shells rather than having spare electrons around and that's what basically gives rise to the reactivity of the elements so that's a recap on the first tutorial which I think is it's quite handy to have. I'll just delete that. And I'll, I'll put these words up as well. And I'll shrink that back down and put it to one side. Okay, but what we're looking at now is um, other elements as well, just so you can get a feel for where the reactivity comes from and why. Uh, certain combinations of elements or groups of elements form certain crystalline structures. So if we look at lithium here, so I prepared lithium earlier, you would expect lithium to have similar properties to sodium. It's just got one um, less shell really. So you've got, you've got the uh, inner shell there which is full, and same for sodium, but then if you look at the next shell it's only got one electron. Now if you look at the periodic table, and I'll put the periodic table up, and you can see that the um, the alkaline metals in group one um, all have similar properties, and that's because basically if we look at this shell here and this shell here, it's just the outer shell that's dominating the properties of that particular element, so it fits nicely into that group. and. As you look at all the electron um, configurations, you'll, you'll notice the periodic table is actually um, written in such a way to tell you basically what the outer shell looks like. 
So lithium you would expect to form lithium chloride. It might not be as stable or uh, it might have similar um, different properties to sodium chloride but you would expect it to form because this, it could adopt the same kind of mechanisms and structures as sodium chloride. The thing that makes it different is the the charge on the on the the nucleus is different so the overall um, effect that the nucleus has on the surroundings is different that that makes the size of the atoms different because they've got different electrons they've got more electrons on the outside and it's the um, the electrons actually govern the size of the atom because the um, the nucleus is actually pretty small. Now if we look at the other elements very quickly now, so we've got lithium which could have formed lithium chloride. Let's have a look at um, the the alkaline earth metal, so let's have a look at magnesium. So we look at magnesium, magnesium can form magnesium chloride but magnesium's actually got two electrons so let's take this chlorine down here as well put chlorine here. I'm going to copy the chlorine as well. Now they're not they're not to scale, so I'll just scale them back up a little bit. There's no there's no reason for that, that's just so I can get more on the page really. And I'll just scale this up a little bit as well. Okay. So if we have a look at the electronic configuration, we see that magnesium being an alkaline earth metal is in group 2 and it's got two outer electrons. So there's one electron there and there's another electron there. If we look at chlorine, it's in group 7 so you can see that it's got seven electrons on the outside and it's quite happy to pick up another electron. And that's exactly what it does. So for magnesium, because it's in group 2, will form a, uh, two uh, bonds with two ionic bonds with magnet with chlorine and it'll donate that electron up to that one and it'll donate that one up to that one and that will form compound magnesium chloride and we've got a little two there as a subscript to say it's two lots of chlorine present. We don't use a big two, that means something different, that means two lots of but this little two means two lots of this element. So if you look at the um, crystalline structure of magnesium chloride, it would have two lots of um, chlorine to one lot of magnesium. And it's, it's all explained by the outer electrons there. So that's, that's how that forms ion bond. And once it donates electrons, the electronic configuration there for chlorine becomes two, eight eight minus and for magnesium it becomes two eight two plus remember it's lost two electrons and for chlorine again the same as before two eight eight minus so the two minuses cancel out the 2 plus so the whole compound is neutral. But it's an ionic compound and that means it's going to have a large crystalline structure. It's going to have a relatively high melting point because it will want to keep all of itself. When it's molten it will be able to conduct electricity because it's got these three um, electrons around because it's a charged species really it's not actually a neutral species, it's got lots of charged species making it neutral so they just cancel each other out and also when it, goes, when it dissolves in water uh, these charges can separate and the, uh, the aqueous solution, that's the water solution, we just call water solutions aqueous solutions the aqueous solution uh, is then free to conduct electricity too so that's magnesium chloride that's one example. I'm just going to end it with um, just one more example. I'll just try and get all that in there. Just one more example. Let's shrink that down. Put that up here. 
So I'm going to leave it. Uh, one more example will be calcium uh, oxide. So the calcium, I'll just drag it over here. Add oxygen. Now you might be able to guess this yourself. Um, so calcium's in group two because it's got two electrons. And if we look at uh, oxygen, it's in group six. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six on that outer shell there. So if I just write the electronic configuration for oxygen because I've not got them down. So we've got two and then we've got six. Okay. So that's the electronic configuration there. So because this calcium is in group two, it's quite happy to dot uh, two electrons. So it could have formed calcium chloride. But because it's reacting with oxygen here, um, it's going to donate two electrons to oxygen, and that's exactly what this does. So they don't have to just donate it to um, one individual element, they can donate two electrons like this, just to one species. So where we had magnesium donating one electron there and one electron there, here we have it donating two. So the new electronic configuration for calcium will be 2, 8, 8, 2 plus and for oxygen now we have oxygen 2, 8, 2 minus it's now got two negative charges and that will give you calcium oxide Ca Oh. So I hope this helps. It's, for me, when I first came across um, the, the electron shells and see electrons moving around, it did make it a lot easier to understand chemistry because you can, it's quite simply just dictated by these outer shells and you can see where it fits in the periodic table and you can also see how uh, compounds are formed and why they have particular formulas like why is calcium oxide CaO well magnesium chloride is MgCl2 and this hopefully explains that well it certainly explains it to me anyway so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, do look out for the other ones on uh, metallic bonds and covalent bonds which complement this but they are slightly different types of bonding so that's all for now